Welcome back. I don't know if I can fully digest what just happened, so I give up and just go to my room, kicking off my shoes before falling face first into bed. It takes me some time to relax and get up so I can get started on homework. It's because the sheets are cool and comforting against my cheeks, and it feels good just lying there with my eyes closed. The school is like some kind of bizarre and surreal island. It's isolated on top of a mountain, and each person is stranger than the last. I can't seem to fit in. What irony. Who would think that fitting in a place that's made for people who are unfit for anywhere else would be easy? Maybe I'm trying too hard. Although I say that, it doesn't help take the edge off, and the words are left echoing off my empty walls. I guess it's not as bad as I expected, though. This place really is more a school and less a hospital pretending it's a school than I thought it would be. If nothing else, the scenery is beautiful. I open one eye, seeing the school books and bottles of pills arranged side by side on my desktop. Maybe this place is too much like a normal school after all. Well, at a normal school, I don't think they'd let you have that bottle of pills. Just saying. I feel very tired this morning. Probably because yesterday itself was a very tiring day. On top of that, I woke up far earlier than necessary. After saying hi to Shizune and Misha, I start doing the work as instructed from the board. It already looks like today is going to be heavy. I don't have a problem with that now, though. Shizune and Misha might jump on me trying to get an answer about whether or not I've decided to join the student council, even if it's just one day. I wouldn't put it past them to try. I don't have an answer for them if they do, so this situation is convenient for me. About 10 minutes into class, Hanago walks in and takes a seat, and no one looks at her. The teacher doesn't even comment on her lateness. He does, however, stop us to say that we're going to break into groups again. I turn my head and see that Shizune and Misha are looking at me. God damn it. Shizune gives me a smile that is equal parts cute and menacing. This is a smile that says, we have you now, there is no escape. Hey John, it looks like we're working together again. Yay, yay! Misha leans sideways while Shizune pushes her desk closer to mine. There really is no escape now unless I were to jump through the window. Jumping out the window isn't the best option, sadly. What's wrong, hey John? Oh, hey John, have you been thinking about what you said yesterday? You said that you would think about joining the student council, didn't you? It's okay, Ichan. We were talking about it after you left, and it would be rude to expect you to already have an answer for us this early, right? Right? <laughs> I'm so happy you two were able to laugh at my expense, and even more pleased to know that you both know how crazy the two of you can be. Now that that's over, Shizune snaps back into serious mode and smacks today's assignment with the back of her hand in an overly dramatic and important way. When I actually look at this stuff, it's mostly just reading. In fact, there are only two problems. I almost want to say something about how her rush to get started seems a bit much, considering the small amount of work. In fact, Shizune probably knows how little there is and simply doesn't care. Yeah, it seems like the workload doesn't matter to her as much as the fact that there is work. The actual amount is unimportant. She approaches everything with the same level of ambition. While I'm reading, I let my eyes wander around the room and catch Anako trying her hand at solving the problems. It looks like she's working alone. I can't remember seeing her working with other people before. Turning back to how shy she is, it's understandable. Hey, that girl over there. Huh? Who he chan Her, Anako, over there. Does she always work alone? I think so, he chan do you feel sorry for her because she's alone? I was just thinking that maybe she would, she could work with us or something. Hmm, no, I don't think that would be a good idea, Hee-chan. Why not? she chan doesn't get along with her. Why? Misha shuffles around the question, letting out a laugh that sounds very strange. It's nervous, but still has that lilting up and down quality present in everything she says. Just because, Hee-chan. By now, Shizune has noticed our conversation, and it makes me realize again how Misha has been signing everything she has been saying this whole time. What, Shichan? The friend of my enemy is my enemy? That sounds so harsh. I'm not going to say that. You said it anyway. I know, Hichan. It's fine if you overhear. 
I wonder if this is Misha's way of keeping things fair, since without her, I wouldn't be able to understand a thing Shizune is saying, and vice versa. Is that also why she sighs all the time? So there's never a conversation Suzanne will be left out of? Anyway, we should start on the problems now, Hichan. We finish with time to spare, and I decide to ask if there are any alternatives on the cafeteria, as frankly, the food so far has been subpar. This is Suzune and Misha arguing among themselves about their favorite restaurants. All of them are downtown, so I don't think we have time to go to all, all the way there. And what about the bill? Yeah, just going to restaurants doesn't seem cost efficient. And probably not that great for you. Are they arguing just for the fun of it? Maybe. They seem so distracted by it that they don't even notice the start of the actual lunch break. I look over my shoulder towards the back of the classroom. She seems to be studying her notes from the previous class. It's an odd sight. Everyone else in the class is busying themselves with the lunch break. Socializing, gossiping, rearranging desks. The ones with actual boxed lunches mixed in and chattering like everyone else, only interrupted by short bouts of eating. But when I watch Anako, it feels that I'm the only one who can see her. Almost as if she was invisible, sort of hiding in plain sight. Is she being bullied? Is she isolating herself from the rest of the class on her own accord? I see her look over her shoulder towards the classroom's rear door. Come to think of it, she hasn't turned the page since I've been s since I've started watching her. I guess she's waiting for someone. What to do? Um. Hmm. Ah, uh, fuck. Well, no, definitely not that one. Um, I think this one. Could be wrong, but I think this one. I still feel bad for making her run away yesterday, so I'd better say something. Um, hey there, Hanako. Hiso? Well, at least she remembers my name. Hey, I just wanted to apologize for yesterday. I didn't mean to startle you or anything. I'm just new here and thought I should get to know my classmates. As Hanako looks up at me, I notice her scarring once more. It's a little bewildering that she can barely that you can barely notice it from across the room, but it's so noticeable from up close. Th that's okay. It it was my fault. Nah, that wasn't anyone's fault. It just kind of happened. So, are you waiting for someone? I saw you looking at the door before. It, yes, Lily. Oh, you mean Lily, the blind girl? God, Hisao, that sounds awful. You don't just go around calling people blind. You fuck. Hanago only nods in response, and I can't help but wonder if defining people through their disabilities as a false pass of the worst kind are just normal here. No, I think that's still a shitty thing to do no matter where you are. You could have literally just said Lily Sato, the class representative for 3 2. That would have been much better. I guess that explains why Lily took off after her yesterday. She seems like a nice girl. Are you two friends? Yes. As if hoping for Lily to appear, she checks over her shoulder again. I'm st I think I'm starting to make her nervous again. I hope I'm not disturbing you right now. N no, that's not it. It's just easier if Lily doesn't come here. Oh, because it's hard to get around the classroom? Not really. Hanako's gaze just past my shoulder and towards Shizune. Shizune? Hanako nods again. What about her? Don't they get along? Hanako shakes her head. Clearly, there is something she doesn't want to talk about. It does make a strange sort of sense, Shizune and Lily not getting along so well. Communication between the two would be all but impossible. It's hard enough talking to Shizune through Misha, even when you see whose hands are talking. Hanako is so focused on Shizune that I am the first to notice Lily at the door. Oh, she's here now. Hanako spins around to confirm this. Upon seeing Lily, she moves quickly to the door. Lily. Ah, Hinako. Good morning. Is the president here? Y yes Hanako glances over her shoulder at Shizune again, as if to confirm she can hear them, even though that's impossible. I suppose we'd best be off, then. Lily's sigh and tone of what seems like frustration makes me raise an eyebrow. I guess there's some kind of... Entity between the two, enmity.
the tea. It's intriguing, but that's not really something I'd ask about. I'm sure if they wanted me to know, then they would tell me. It's only my third day here. Should be trying to make friends, not finding out why people are enemies. Still, it's a little funny to find out that this school has little feuds, just like my old high school. Well, regardless of the, regardless of the position they're in, these are still children of, well, I suppose adolescents of reasonable age. Their habits and personalities won't change so drastically. It's just more likely they'll be understanding of other people. Even if people are more tolerant of others, they're still going to get on each other's nerves. Hey Lily, how are things? I'm sorry I made you run off yesterday. Oh my, is that a sow? I didn't realize you were here. It seems that Lily is a little embarrassed about being so frank in front of me. S sorry Lily, I, I thought you realized. No, it's alright, Hinako. Hisao, please don't worry about yesterday. It was just a misunderstanding. If you say so. I'm still working this place out. Well then, I think you'll find most people here are a lot more forgiving than elsewhere. If you are feeling a little confused, please don't be afraid to ask questions. Sure, I'll remember that. Um, Lily... Lily gives a small nod of acknowledgement. I'm sorry, Hisao, but we must be off. Hanako really doesn't look all that comfortable here right now, and Lily still seems a little embarrassed. I wonder if my apologies really made any impact. Mind if I accompany you two? I know I'm kind of pushing it, but Lily hmms quietly, still smiling. I'm sure that we could accommodate you, can't we, Hanako? She looks at Lily, then at me, and then she freezes wide-eyed. Sh sure Well then, shall we go? I'm sure Lily wouldn't do this so easily if she saw how scared Hanako looks, but it can't be helped now. Declining after the deal is sealed would only cause confusion and problems. So we leave, all three together. Lily walks beside the wall, letting her cane gently tap against it every now and then. Hanako comes along right beside her, so close that she is practically half-hugging her as they go. Although it must be her walking that... It may, it must make her walking that much harder. Lily takes it in stride. As we turn around the corner of the hallway, something hits me in the chest with the force of a steam train. Hanako shrieks a little and my vision briefly goes black. We bought too many games. Now we gotta play them all. So what about the steam train? Ouch. Opening my eyes, I see a pair of saucer-like green eyes looking up at me. They belong to the perpetrator, a short girl who bumped into me and has now fallen down onto the hallway door. She wears a PE uniform and a very worried frown. The former strikes me as a rather strange thing to have on during lunch break. More striking than that, though, is that she doesn't have legs. Or she does, but they are not flesh and bone. Her pale and very much flesh and bone thighs end in shins and feet made of some black metallic or plastic-like material. They look disturbingly artificial and unnatural. It almost makes me forget that, the, that my chest is hurting. The girl winces a little, rubs her nose, and jumps up. Oh man, hey, are you alright? I'm sorry about that, really. I wasn't looking where I was going, and you just came out of nowhere. Sorry. Sorry! She's looking really apologetic in that hurt puppy way of looking apologetic. I quickly forget about being angry or anything, since hurt puppies are my weak spot. It's okay, don't worry about it. Ouch. I say that, but there's a stinging pain growing in my chest, and I know that this is about the biggest possible danger for my condition. Don't overexert yourself. Don't forget about your medication. And most of all, don't get hit in the chest. I try to rub my solar plexus to chase the pain away, holding my breath in an attempt to hear my heartbeat. It seems normal. Hey, sh should I get a nurse? The worried, high-pitched voice of the girl snaps me out of it. I stare at her for a few seconds dumbfounded, until I realize that I probably looked worse off than I really was, doubled over myself and looking all tense. Damn. I'm overly worried about my heart. Er, uh, no need, I'm fine. Managing to say something in response, I pull myself upright, feeling my sore ribs one last time, and take a deep breath. She just knocked the wind out of me. Big time. But it's nothing more than that. 
You sure you're okay? I, I hit you pretty hard. It's okay, I said I was fine. Nothing's broken. No harm done. That's good. I was... Hisao, what happened? She's not quite up to speed for the obvious reason, but she sounds very worried. More than what the situation deserves, really. Someone just bumped into me. Nothing serious, just winded. I'm gonna end the part there. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later. Peace.